the prison riot. Cable was the kind of place you could just walk in, <laughs> fresh into town, and start doing radio programming. And I think I did that show, and I did one other strange show while I was here that for a few weeks. Uh, it was an all-night music show where we just kind of rambled around. And Kibu was two rooms in Belmont Street. I think it was like 31st in Belmont. It was right on the street level. And then there's apartments. There were wood frame apartment houses that were behind it, which I think burned down sometime in the mid-'70s. Actually, there were three rooms because you'd walk in, and there was the what's – sort of the large studio, and there were, I remember this early on that they were putting egg cartons along the walls for soundproofing, and then there was the reception area, and then there was the air room, which had a couple antique Ampex tape recorders and some other kludged together equipment, and it was, uh, it was run by men, <laughs> and uh, I, I was pretty much involved with the station for about a year, and starting in the summer of 1972, I was involved with starting a news department, and Michael Wells was involved in that. Uh, he had started a scribe, and we had our first meeting in the basement of the scribe office that was just down the street on Belmont Street, I think, and... The news department was completely, I mean, we had, of course, no paid staff or anything like that, and we had no budget, and we were getting things, uh, or a lot of our news from Liberation News Service, which was this, I don't know how they sent it to us, because, uh, but you'd get it, I think you'd get it in the mail, so the news was at least a few days late, and we actually, I mean, you might not want to include this, but we made a lot of our phone calls using uh, phony credit cards, <laughs> that was our budget for, I think the statute of limitations is out on that. <laughs> Uh, but it was uh, it was actually a very exciting time to be uh, doing community radio news. But the guy who was the program director thought that the, the news program was a lesbian plot because five of the people in the out of ten were women, of which maybe three or four of us were lesbians. And he ki he killed it at the end of the summer, along with all the other women's programming. And at that point, I left Cable and didn't come back until 1978. Uh, who were some of the other people involved in that? Do you remember besides Michael? Uh, let's see. Was, was one Barbara Gundel? Barbara Gundel, yes, definitely her. I'm, I'm trying to remember if David Wantra was also involved. Um, she mentioned Morris Isserman. Morris Isserman was probably involved. He was involved with The Scribe, but he might have also been involved with the new show. Uh, Nancy Cohn, who's no longer in Portland. I, I'm not sure about the other people. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Okay, so you left and did other things in your life during that time? Yeah. I um, Well, I was real involved with the Women's Health Clinic. That was like my, one of my big activities. And then I moved out to Sandy and lived there for four years. And while I was living in Sandy, I started listening to KBU again. I mean, I was so mad at KBU uh, at the end of that summer that I didn't even listen to it. So I moved to Sandy about a year and a half after uh, my fallout with KBU. And I was, by that summer, I was listening to it constantly, and it was really a lifeline. I used to say this is when I would be pitching for the Pledge Drive, but it meant a lot to me, and it was a connection. And even though, I mean, it's only 30 miles from Portland, but it, in those days, it felt like a very long ways to be. And it kept me really in touch with what was going on in Portland, even though I really didn't want to live in Portland. It, was, it, it helped with my whole process of what was going on for me at that time. Was it the music? Was it the public affairs? Was it what was it that was the, well, it wasn't the prison riot? Cable was the kind of place you could just.